Humans are not meant to depend upon human strength. When God created us, he created us in a way that we would be power assisted. You may not know it, but I know it. We had a little Volkswagen Beetle there in, on the mission field in Africa, my wife and I. And when Annie went shopping and she had to park the car, oh, that was a job. With both hands, she pulled one side. It was so heavy. The steering was not electrically assisted, not power assisted. Then we got power steering a little later and I watched my dear wife. She parked with a little finger. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't endure my ministry. I enjoy my ministry. We are power assisted. You shall receive power. God knows that we cannot do it ourselves. You shall receive power. Power, power assisted. Being a purpose driven church is part of it, but being a Holy Spirit driven church is New Testament. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. I like that already. A mighty rushing wind. That's how the Holy Spirit moves. I sometimes hear people tell me they need music to build up an atmosphere. Atmosphere, atmosphere. Well, God bless them for their atmosphere. And you know, I come from Florida. Amen. Yes, I live already 10 years with my wife in Florida. And I have gone th through two hurricanes. And I can tell you this, when a hurricane blows and you are on the street, you have to hold on to dear life. Otherwise, you will be swept away. And when a hurricane blows, I never heard anybody speak about atmosphere. <laughs> we read in Acts chapter 2, there came a mighty rushing wind from heaven right through Jerusalem. That was the first sign of the Holy Spirit. Our hearts are fireplaces for the Holy Spirit. And before the fire came, that mighty wind had to come to blow out all the ash and all the trash and plant that flame, that fire. We are made for it. We are made for the fire of the Holy Spirit. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. Let me make a couple of observations. That's all I'm going to do here. But I believe it will bless you as it blessed me when the Holy Spirit showed it to me. We always clamor for people whom we supposed to be highly anointed to get some of their anointing. I'm telling you this, in the upper room, the Bible explicitly says there were 120 people. And it says that the flames descended on every head. That means there was a flame for every head. 
Somebody in heaven must have counted the heads of the upper room. And all received that flame. All received the fire. It's not a lottery to get the power of the Holy Spirit. 10 out of 10, 120 out of 120, and 15,000 out of 15,000 in the name of Jesus. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. It's for all blood washed Christians. First, we must be washed from our sins in the blood of Jesus. And it is that washing in the blood of Jesus that qualifies us to receive that fire from heaven instantly, instantly. No waiting. The power waits for you. God waits for you. Glory to God. Glory to God indeed. Hallelujah. I've got good news for you too. For people who always think they are not worthy to receive this glorious Holy Spirit, this most Holy Spirit. Listen, the Holy Spirit has come for the best of us and for the worst of us. If you're washed in the blood of Jesus, you qualify. Are you happy? I think this is absolutely fantastic. This is absolutely fantastic. Why does the Holy Spirit come? When I was small, in my father's church, my father was a pastor. We give many reasons what we had to do before the Holy Spirit could come. They were of one accord. That meant they were in perfect unity. So we all had to be in perfect unity, perfect unity, perfect unity. Dear me, and that didn't seem to work out. There was always somebody quarreling. So now the Holy Spirit wouldn't come because there was somebody quarreling and the rest had to suffer. That's nonsense. All the conditions we put on People, I say again, be washed in the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the qualifying factor. And now, I want to tell you, and I give you the scripture, why we can receive the Holy Spirit. Here it is, John chapter 14, verse 16. Jesus speaking here about the Holy Spirit. He said to the disciples, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, namely the Holy Spirit, that he, the Holy Spirit, may abide with you forever. He didn't say, you will pray. He said, I will pray. Now, we have yet another less feather for our own hat. Not one thing less to boast. It wasn't my prevailing prayer. Jesus prayed for me. And he prayed for you. His prayer will be answered today. And you will receive, you shall receive, you shall receive. Glory to God. Amen. The Holy Spirit will not fall on the floor. He is looking for those who are washed in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And you know what I suddenly realized? I suddenly realized... I 
I'm a residential address of the Holy Spirit on earth. And you are a residential address of the Holy Spirit on earth because he made our bodies to be his temple. Are you happy? Yeah. Amen. He's with us. Fully with us. We don't know to, we don't need to squeeze the Holy Spirit to come. We don't need to bait him or pull him, pull him down. He is here willingly sent by the Father and by the Son.